Hmm. Let's start this. I have 20 minutes, you say? 30. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, a little more information would probably be appropriate. Um, yeah, so I'm co founder and software engineer at Kinfolk IO. Um, we're actually in Berlin, just a short uh, bike ride from here, or even a walk. Um, yeah, we've been, our team has been working on Rocket actually since the beginning, and I think what a lot of people don't know is actually most of the Rocket development has actually happened in Berlin. Um, it was our team working alongside CoreOS, um, but now some of, even CoreOS has a presence here, so yeah, and actually that'll bring us to another point. I was also a former uh, GNOME maintainer. So if you're using GNOME System Monitor and you bring up the About box, you might see my name. Um, but before we start, and Leonard should have done this, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're one of the organizers of uh, System Deconf, and that's going to be taking place just before LinuxCon in Berlin. And uh, here's the dates. And last year what we had, we had two days of presentations and we had a Hackfest um, day. This year we're adding an additional day, um, and that's gonna have kind of a different target audience. That's gonna be more people who wanna learn about SystemD, uh, maybe do workshop shop, um, style um, sessions. You know, um, It'll be a full day and we'll have basically two rooms, um, so six sessions in total that you can choose from, um, one of the two rooms to go to. Uh, yeah, so I think you'll be announcing uh, the start of the CFP and the work more details about the workshop next week, so I won't go further into that. Um, and next week is uh, CoreOS Fest, and that's taking place here in Berlin. So, and if you want um, reduced rate of, or reduced uh, ticket price, you can talk to me afterwards. I can give you a code. Okay, so back to the talk. Um, how many people are, know about Rocket? Yeah, how many people have actually used Rocket? Very few, good. So I'm actually going to do this from very beginner, um, this is a very beginner talk, so I think that's probably appropriate. Now, how many people have you used actually container technology? That's probably Docker? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna um, look at what Rocket is, uh, um, why one would use it, and uh, what makes it unique, and we're gonna have a demo afterwards. Um, I did this talk actually a couple weeks ago, uh, I think you were there, uh, but I didn't have the demo aspect, so. It'll be different. Um, so what is Rocket? It's a modern, secure, and composable runtime, container runtime. Um, modern meaning it runs on modern Linux systems. It actually has very tight integration with systemd. It doesn't require that systemd run on the machine. However, whenever you're running a Rocket container, systemd will be running inside of the actual container. So on your standard system, you will actually have systemd inside of systemd. I'm sure you'd like to hear that, right, right Leonard? <laughs> Um, it's secure, so the security first approach is what we take. Um, if something is gonna be insecure, uh, you, actually actually have, you actually have to um, disable it. And I'll show you some commands, because we'll, we'll actually build our own um, container image, and then we'll see that when we run that, I'm not gonna do the signing part for this demo, we'll see when we run that, we actually have to say, this is an insecure option because this is, image is not signed. Um, it's composable, so Rocket is made up of different parts, and um, so you have, we have three stages is what we call it. Uh, we stage one is just the Rocket command line, and stage two is basically the runtime environment. Um, the standard one is a container, however you can run Rocket on, um, you can basically use KVM, it's called LKVM, it's, um, it's an optimized KVM for Linux um, guest on Linux host. Um, so you can do that, and we have a thing called Rocket Fly, which is more, it doesn't really have the security stuff, but it allows you to use the packaging and signing of the image format. Um, and yeah, I guess container runtime, we can imagine what that means. Um, but Rocket itself, that was more about the Rocket project. The Rocket itself is also a command line tool, and we're gonna look at that. So why would you use it? Um, so you wanna run, this is just general stuff for containers. You wanna run your app in a deterministic, um, environment, so you know that each time you run it, it'll be the same. Um, isolation, so they think they're alone on the system. Uh, they basically, um, yeah, usually there's no other users. There's, uh, they're, they're all by themselves. They're not affected by the outside of the, the system it's actually running on. Um, and you, if you're running in the container version, then you don't have the overhead of a VM, um, but you have the similar, um, similar isolation. 
and you get this distributed, distributable package for your apps. Um, so the apps images, this is the same with Docker and with, um, with the Rocket um, standard image, which is called ACI, app container image. Um, it's just basically a tarball um, with some metadata and then the root file system. And you can run cryptographically verifiable code. So when you, like I said, um, the images are generally signed, and if they're not, you have to opt out of it. And so this is a way to know that you're actually running the code that you originally generated. There's some other things, but we'll get to it. Um, and what makes Rocket unique, or how does Rocket differ from Docker? Because I know you're gonna ask that. Um, so there's no daemon. Uh, we let the init system do what it does on the, mach on the machine. Uh, best, uh, this is usually system D. Um, so with the Docker way of running stuff, you, the command line tool is actually just making a REST API call to the daemon. Um, and then the Docker daemon is handling the container um, management. That is, you know, if the container, if Docker daemon crashes, which it can with software, um, your, your, all your containers come down. Um, if you're running with Rocket, then system D will have to come down for that to happen, and if that happens on your machine, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be working anyway, so. Um, and with, so with Docker, it's designed so you can run a single app in your container, but I think if you're a Docker user, you know there's a thing called Docker Compose. Um, this is basically what a pod is. It allows you to run multiple um, apps in your, in a, together in a pod. It shares a lot of the context within the pod. Um, and it is secured by default, which I mentioned before. You have to explicitly opt out. Um, composable. Um, this is what we talked about, where you can have containers. Uh, you can run it as a container or as a, a hardware virtualization, which is actually another one of the advantages. It's very easy to do that. You just have to change the command line a little bit. And uh, yeah, there's some other things, but those are the most important. Okay, so the demo stuff. Now, this is always where things go wrong, so let's see what can go wrong. Um, one second. I had, you probably can't see that, can you? Yeah. Okay, let me, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna run a, oops, actually let me go. Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna run this, we're gonna run this um, command. Um, we have to run a sudo because we are, um, you need to have root access. Um, and we're gonna run it with the debug bug flag, flag so we can see actually what's happening. Um, and we're gonna run it interactively. We wanna do this because what we wanna do, we wanna see what it looks like inside of a container. And we're just gonna run a busy box container and the default um, application that it's gonna run is basically the shell. So let's do this. Oops. So it's downloading an image. Okay, so good. So let's scroll up a little bit and we can see what was actually doing. Um, it's taking this stage one image. Um, this is the core OS image. This is gonna be a container image. Um, if we, it's doing the discovery, um, oops. Oh, actually, okay. Already had it on my system. No, actually, okay, I found it. So it's actually doing the discovery. Um, we'll talk about discovery in a little bit when we make our own application. Um, and so it found it on the Kinfolk uh, web page, and we'll show how that actually works in just a second. Um, and it's saying here that our keys, the keys for this image are already found, so there's no fetching. Um, and it was says who it's assigned by. Um, yeah. And it's um, creating the image manifest and things like that. We'll look into all this um, stuff in just a little bit. It's setting up networking here, um, et cetera. Okay, so we're inside the image, um, inside the container, sorry. Um, let's see what it looks like in here. So we just have basically a file system. Um, but the interesting thing is we talked about it, the, the app that looks like it's um, by itself. And so here is actually all the processes in the, oops. I'm sorry, you guys can't see this, can you? Uh, okay. Oops, is that okay? Okay, so as you can see here, 
we have the PIDs are one, two, five, and seven. I think as you know in Linux systems, whenever you create a new app, um, whenever you have a new process, it actually takes the next um, PID. So these are all very small. However, on, your, um, on the host system, this is inside the container, but let's take a look inside the host system. Um, we're gonna say, just actually we can do this one. And we will see, um, do, do, do. Ah. Okay, so we can see here that the same applications that we're running over here, let's see, we have systemd journal, systemd standard TTY. Um, we can see here that the PID is actually very different. Um, and so there's a mapping that goes on here, but you can actually see all the processes from, from outside the container, the ones that are running inside the container. Um, okay, and so what I wanted to show you too is that if you run machine control, this is an aspect of systemd that um, Leonard did not talk about. Um, we will see that um, there's, that whenever Rocket runs the container, it actually registers that container with machine control. So this is a part of the philosophy where Rocket wants to integrate well with the, the tools that are already on the system. And we can also look at a, so we're gonna copy that and then we're gonna go, so he didn't, um, Leonard did not show you an actual, there was another flag to journal D that will show you the, um, the log messages from an actual machine or you could call it machine because that can be a VM or a container. And so here we can get the messages just from that, um, just from that running container. Okay, so that's the very basic. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna show you also one other thing. So if you wanna look and see which, what kind of things we have here, we can do rocket list. And, oops, okay, yeah, I didn't delete that. That's gonna be part of the demo. Um, but if you look here, we have the busy box one, and we can get the information here about um, that. And we can see what kind of images we have here. And so you can see, it's not just got the application image busy box. Um, we also have the stages, the stage ones that these can possibly run under. Um, so that's the image list. Okay, let's exit out of this container. Okay, and now we're gonna look at how to actually build an ACI. ACI, like I said, is the app container image. Oops, actually, should probably follow along. So that was about running the container. Um, now we're gonna create an app container image. Um, by the way, I should point out that you don't actually have to create your own app container images if you already have Docker images. You can take a Docker image, and whenever you're doing a rocket run, you can just prefix it with Docker, and then the image name. What? Oh yeah. Darn it. So you should be able to see that now. Um, you can just prefix it with the Docker name, with the Docker um, uh, protocol, basically. And that will um, take a Docker image. It will use a tool that my colleague created called Docker to ACI. It'll convert it on the fly, and then you'll have an ACI that actually gets run. So you're not actually running the Docker image. Uh, you're actually running the converted ACI image, um, but it's, it works just fine. And if there's something that doesn't work there, then file a bug on the Docker to ACI and uh, our project, and we'll get it fixed. So, so yeah, because um, I know a lot of people put in a lot of work on building Docker images, and so uh, yeah, you you don't have to actually change that if you don't need to. But what we're going to show you is how to actually make your um, ACIs. So I'm going to remove this one I already created. Okay, so what we're gonna look at is, let's see here. So, okay, I think we can see all that. Um, can everybody see that fine? So this is, there's a tool, um, so if you're doing Docker stuff, then you probably use Docker file. Um, that's kind of a static thing, you have to um, you know, create separate, uh, um, you find yourself often creating separate bash files to do certain things and everything. Um, this, what we have is, um, this is actually a command line tool. And so this is a script that we have. Um, and so you basically do begin this build. Um, then what we have here, we just give it a name. Um, then we have the application, which we actually we'll look at in just a second. Um, but it's basically a very simple web server that just um, serves a string. Um, and uh, then we set the exec. So we copied that in, and now we have to set it as the default exec. 
um, binary. And then we have to tell it um, which port to open on this container. And then we tell it to create this ACI. So it's quite simple. There's a lot of other stuff you can do here. Um, you can, um, so what we have now is a, we have a static um, application, which actually, let's go into. So let's say, so we wrote this in Go, or I wrote it in Go. It's uh, extremely small and simple. Um, basically set a, um, a route. So just the default route, we have uh, port 990. Um, so we need, that's the why we're exposing that on the ACI build. Um, yeah, and so we can actually see that if we run this, okay, oops. Hold on. Oh. We not there. This should work. If that doesn't work, that is because uh, okay. Sorry, I had to add some networking stuff there. Oops. So that's actually what we want to show. The that's all we're gonna get from as far as app development on this side. Um, okay, so let's stop that. We want to get the same effect, of course, but running it from a container. Um, and so let's go into the, so we have this here script. Oops. Ah, okay. So what I actually had, uh, if you saw the script, at the bottom I have, I have it, um, uh, the AC build end, debug AC build end, I've commented out because I actually wanted to show you what um, is in the tarball. Um, so let's do this. Oops. Hey. Okay. So, um, so we're going to do that again. We're going to, okay, so now what we have, we have the ACI. Um, so we are now going to run this. Okay, actually let's do the simple, we're going to show that this is not going to work at first because what we're getting here is that it's looking here for the, for the cryptographic verification. Um, so, actually, one second. So we have to say secure options equals image. So we don't, we want to ignore the image verification. Um, and we want to, what we need to do though, oops, actually I can just say host equal, oops. We want to say to use the, um, the host networking and this. So this should work. Looks like it's working. And if we refresh here, yeah, we get the same thing. Okay. So we have a, we had created an app and we put it in a container. We built the container ourselves and we ran it. Okay. So um, the next thing I wanted to show you is how do you actually distribute these? Where do you put it? You can run it, as you can see, you can run it from the command line, but you might want to share these with um, your organization, within your organization or with the world. Um, and I think people from the Docker world know the Docker hub for that. Um, so let's actually see how that actually works. So on our server, we have a directory called ACIs. Um, doesn't look like much. However, if we go to the source here, we will see that, that we have some meta tags in that web pa in that page. Um, and so we have the meta tag AC Discover, Discovery, and AC Discovery um, Pubs. I think I'm going over. <laughs> um, yeah, and so this is the key that you need to verify the image. Yeah. Okay. And so that's actually how, what we saw the discovery stuff in the, um, in the, uh, in the, um, the output of the debug, the debug output. 
And that's actually, it's going here, it's checking that, um, downloading it, making sure, getting the GPG key, and um, I already had it in my key ring, so um, it, it didn't ask me to trust it, but if you're doing that for the first time, it'll actually get you to um, trust it. Okay, so we're gonna exit out of here. And what I wanted to, I wanted to show is that, uh, so we ran that in a, we ran that in a um, container, but now what we want to do, we want to use this a different stage one. Um, we want to use this the KVM stage one, and so I've already down, I've already um, fetched this stage one image as you saw in my um, the output to rocket um, image list, and so we're going to run this. And so the networking stuff is a little bit different with this. Um, we have the address here. Actually, we can. Even better to show you is that we have rocket list here. And so this is actually showing me, it set up the networking a little different. And so now we'll need to go here, let's copy that. And yeah, so we have it there as well. And that's running in full, virtu um, full hardware virtualization. As an app designer, you do not have to do anything um, special for that. And the same exact container image that you created can run in the, um, as in a container and um, inside of the, uh, yeah, VM. Okay, let's go back to the, okay. So I don't have much time. Five minutes, okay. Um, okay, so we can show some of the things that you can actually do. So we had, so we don't have a running image now. Or do we? Yeah, we do. And so here we can see the state. We have the states running and exited. And so you can do rocket status. And it'll tell you the status um, of the application, um, which PID is located with, and um, exited false. Because that, that, that um, container, or in this case a VM, is actually still running. Um, if we do the same thing with with the other one, this will say it exited and it was um, it's it, it basically is a way to get the the state really easily. And so if we go here, we can see there's a lot of other um, things that the you can get you get information using the cat manifest. This is the manifest file. Oh, before we go too far, um, speaking of the manifest files, I did promise to show you actually what it looks like whenever. So this is actually what's in the tarball. It's a manifest file. And if we, let's look what's in that. So we have the name we gave it. Um, yeah, some simple information, Arch and um, what operating system. It has the exec that we have created, created here. And then it has the network ports that it needs to open. And then some annotations. Um, it's actually from the AC build script itself. Um, but inside of the, rootfs, we have, that's all we have because as we saw in the busy box, we had actually um, um, an environment that you can actually get a shell, you can um, play around in there. But this only was a static, um, this was a Go, a Go application that was built statically. And so the only thing you need in there is a um, ACI file. I mean, is the um, binary. And so if we do here, we can see this is a tiny um, container image. It's only two megs. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so. So let's look at a bit of what's to, so that was the demo. Um, any, we'll, we'll get to questions in just a second. Um, some things that are coming up, um, the open container image is a initiative to kind of, you know, get uh, the core S people and the, uh, um, or the Docker people and the rest of the world on the same image, on the same image format. And so there's probably gonna be support landing for that pretty soon. Um, uh, getting Rocket integrated with Kubernetes. Um, if you're interested in um, large container deployments, Kubernetes is really the way to go nowadays. Um, and a new stage one images. So for example, uh, one could have stage one images for OS X or Microsoft. It would require some, some changes because right now it's only for Linux, but um, OS X and Microsoft just introduced um, AP, um, you know, uh, functionality in their operating system to support containers, so that's not, um, that could work. Um, and more stuff, if you want to contribute, you can always come to the GitHub, 
GitHub um, project. Okay, so that's the end. Um, but if you want to work on cool stuff like this that makes up the foundational uh, layers of your um, Linux operating system, then you can contact me. And uh, if you're, yeah, we, we're a small team, but we think we do pretty cool stuff. Um, questions? Exactly. Um, so whenever a rocket is um, started, when you're running the container version, um, it um, it basically uses inspawn. It, it, it passes parameters in inspawn to tell it what kind of um, C group. C group does the resource isolation, um, namespaced, which does the actual um, um, major isolation um, parts of it, as you saw with the PIDs and the shifting there. Um, so yes, it. it Inspawn does all that, and actually, in the last week, it actually does even more because um, we were able to um, get rid of some things that we had because um, the upstream Inspawn project got more um, interesting stuff for us. So, yeah. Yeah. Yo, please, Lee, uh, can do anything uh, you can do on the host uh, uh, level in the container. Mm -hmm. So, how do you deal with, uh, with limits and how do you deal with? Um, so I showed you the um, the image manifest. Um, there's also a pod manifest, and the pod manifest you can put in like CPU limits, um, memory limits. Um, right now the basic stuff is there, but one can imagine putting a lot of other stuff in there that's available to be able to do on a Linux system. Um, but yeah, that's you basically create your own pod manifest, and you can do that on the command line, um, or you can put it actually in a in a pod manifest file that looks very similar to the image manifest file. Um, but you know, these uh, rocket is actually meant to be run. You usually, don't do it from the command line. Uh, you maybe for testing. It's actually meant to be run from systemd unit files, and there you can actually specify a lot of your stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Um, you mean um, uh, user namespace? Uh, yeah, there's work ongoing about that. I think you were doing some stuff in System D that you thought might be interesting for us. Uh, we have, we have, we actually do have support for that. It's called private user. It's the private user flag. Um, so yes, there is support for that. It's not um, fully there, but I don't think it's really fully there for Linux in general yet. Um, so yeah, but yeah, there is support for that. Yeah, we always we always try to use the uh, inspawn stuff if we can, but sometimes we have to do our own thing, um, at least for a time being, until it gets uh, where we need it. So, yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks.